Hello everyone, I'm Said. In this video, I'm going to talk about HTTP client and one of the most frequent questions about why HTTP client is dangerous. Why is bad when you are trying to instantiate the HTTP client? Why everyone says, even Microsoft document says, you should not create the HTTP client frequently and you should use another solutions that later on we talk about them. In this video, I'm going to focus on what's the problem exactly, what happened behind the scenes that everyone says if you are trying to create new instance of HTTP client every time, it will use your resources. What it means? Have you thought about it? So in this sample project, I have a console application with these lines only. There is a iteration and 10 times I'm going to create a new instance of HTTP client and then just call google.com and log the status code of the result. So first of all, let's talk about the HTTP client. HTTP client is an object that you can create and send HTTP request, post, get everything about the HTTP protocol. The HTTP client object is disposable. If we see this class here, inherit from HTTP message invoker, and then if we go here, it will implement iDisposable interface. It means you can dispose or better, you should dispose these objects. So the better solution for disposing the objects in C Sharp is using a statement. But HTTP client is different because it's not only about your application resources. So what it means when you say dispose an object, it means you need to dispose one of the using object in your application scope. If we talk about the memory side, your application has a part of the memory okay so every object that you are creating take the part of the memory and by disposing that object it will release the memory and killing the resources usually in the dotnet garbage collector will take care of this kind of cleaning but some objects that is disposable you need to take care of them but for the http client it's a little different because HTTP client is using subsequent network. Let me talk about what happened when you are trying to send a request in case of HTTP protocol. For example, here, when you are trying to say client async and put a URL here, your operating system trying to get a port, a socket, to send this request to the, for example, Google server and then get the result from that socket in high level, very high level, apart from, okay, there is some handshaking between. So, but the point is after you're done with object of the HTTP client, this using a statement will dispose the object, but those connections and those socket that already taken by HTTP client is still alive. So if we want to check what is happening behind the scenes, let me run the project. I already opened this console here. So this is our project, right? We want to check the network part and monitor our network card so we can see uh, which port is open and what is going on in our network part. So in Windows, you can simply write and use the netstat command dash A. It will open all of this kind of stuff for the processes that using some ports here. Okay. So if I run our project.net run, let me put the interval here. So we are sending 10 requests and is done. Okay. But if we continue monitoring this uh, network uh, stats here, we can see there is some time wait records here that is still there. And actually that's a problem. The problem is this time wait is part of the TCP protocol 
And when your HTTP client send a request and you dispose that object, this ports that already taken by your application or your OS, it's still alive and in time weight mode. Later on, we talk about this time weight. But if you ask yourself, what is this one? Is IP version 6 of my local. So if I get my IP here, IP config, this is the IP version 6 of my local right and this is the ports that already taken for sending those requests so actually the http client inside using the http client handler and that handler is responsible for opening these web sockets there are multiple handler like http client handler socket client handler and uh, you can use those handler for extra settings like using proxy like using cookies any other stuff but that client handler is responsible for opening the socket. So every client handler object behind the scenes is using and creating new client handler. That client handler will use new socket for sending your request. Now we can see that there is some time weight records here in the our network status. So what we can do and what is the problem here? For talking about what is this exactly, let me show you a picture here. In the TCP protocol, when a client wants to connect to a server, first they are trying to do a handshake. Maybe you heard of three steps handshake. So there's the client send a scene and then server return back and then they establish the connection after both sides are done for example our client request for calling the google and when it's done and when we are disposing the, that object it's return and send a fin as a finish connection right server will return the act act means acknowledgement it means the server says to the client, I got your fin request. And then server send a finish request to the client. First client send the finish to the server. And then server says, okay, I got your finish. I know you want to close the connection. And I close the connection as well. So here the server will send another fin to the client and client uh, send another act to the server. But as you can see, there is a time weight status. It means after client send final act to the server, which says, I got your finish, server here will close the connection but in client side it will wait for two msl msl means maximum segment lifetime why is that what's the issue or what is the uh, idea of waiting for two maximum segment lifetime first each maximum segment lifetime based on the tcp standard is two minutes 120 seconds and 2 msl means 4 minutes so it means after server close the connection client still wait for 4 minutes still will keep that ports open for 4 minutes right it's too much the default value okay you can change the values for waiting less than 4 minutes but this is the standard and it's better to not change that values, right? So here is the point. In the TCP protocol, when client wants to close the connection, that ports that already taken by HTTP client handler is still open for four minutes. And you cannot reuse that ports because it's already in use, okay? So this four minutes, it means 240 seconds there is a port that is in use. So imagine that in your application here, maybe you have a lot of requests. So if you have some APIs, because I got this error for socket exhaustion, it means every time creating new HTTP client instance, it will take new port 
and keep it for four minutes. And uh, in case of having a lot of requests, you will take all of available ports on the server. So in Windows, you have only 65,000 ports that you can take. For example, if you have 10,000 requests per second, easily you can take all of them. And after, when you are trying to send a request, you start getting an exception that says there is no port available for sending any request. There is exceptions that socket exceptions, something like that. So that's the issue for HTTP client. So now you know that when we say HTTP client is bad, what's the issue? Okay, so here, for example, if I turn it to 1000 iteration, and if I run it again, let me clear the console and also here. So if I run the application and I start calling the things, okay, let's start and creating new HTTP clients. And here we can see there is start seeing some connections or some ports that already open and is in the time wait state, right? You can see a lot of ports already taken and still open. That's the issue. It's really bad, guys, because I had this experience long time ago. It was for sending some SMS for the users and we had a lot of users that time. So I had an API for calling that SMS provider for sending the short message. Every time I was opening and creating new instance of the HTTP client. So that was really bad experience, honestly, because whole server after a while, it was crashing or none of the application was working on the server because there was no port available for even for the other application because you already got all of the available ports for your application. And then if there is another application trying to send a request over the network, there is no port available for it, right? And after I try to think what I'm doing here and start searching about what is the problem with HTTP client, and I realize that, yes, that's the issue actually. You can see a lot of port open and in use. Unfortunately, I, this is the, no, it's not the part of .NET problem, honestly, because this is a protocol, the standard of the TCP. Every time they say when client wants to close connection, they have to wait for four minutes. You can decrease this number for the less than, I don't know, one minute, but still, because this is a standard, I am afraid of changing this kind of standard values, honestly. Anyway, so what we can do in this video, I focused on the, the problem, showing you the problem, what is the issue about the HTTP context. But so there is two solutions for solving this problem. One, you can reuse one instance of the HTTP client. For example, if you create one client here, new HTTP client, and then only something like that, reuse client every time that you want to call a server, a third party API. This is not good because it has a problem still. The problem is DNS resolution. For example, google.com has an IP for connecting to the server. DNS will resolve this domain to the actual IP of the server, but sometimes it will cache based on your operating system. It will cache that result. When you are trying to use like this way, or better we can say as a single tone in your application, you create one HTTP client and reuse it for your entire application lifetime. But if there is some DNS changes in that domain, we still have some issues because of that caching stuff. The best way is using HTTP client factory. 
I'm not going to talk about it because it's not in this scope for the video. But if you don't know how to use the HTTP client factory, please leave a comment for me. I will create another video for it. That's it. The best practice is using HTTP client factory. So how it works, we'll create a pool of this kind of HTTP client handler, not the HTTP client objects. Because here, as I say, if we go here in the HTTP client, the constructor, you can pass one HTTP message handler. There is different type of the HTTP client handler, and you can pass that handler when you are trying to create HTTP client. So what HTTP client factory does is creating pool of this HTTP client handlers. And every time you request for getting new object of the HTTP client, it will create new object and reuse one of those HTTP client handlers because those ports are taken by HTTP client handler, not HTTP client object. Okay. I hope this video was useful for you. I've tried to cover the main issue for using the HTTP client. And if you have any question or if you have any other solution for addressing this issue, please leave a comment for me. So that's it. Thank you for your time. Bye.